On an ideal day, Venice looks like this. But not on an ideal day, it looks like this. Venice for decades has cashed in on the fact that it's a floating city. With 20 million tourists flooding this city, almost everyone is stunned by its beauty and the rich sense of culture and history that it brings. For context, Venice is built on 118 islands on top of a lagoon in the Adriatic Sea. There are no roads, just canals that allow mobility around the tiny city. The Grand Canal, the main artery of Venice, is lined with several Renaissance and Gothic palaces. The Venetian Lagoon is a very shallow water body with a depth of just one meter. Given the fact that the islands crisscross with canals, it's always vulnerable to high tides that could flood the entire city. This phenomenon is known as Aqua Alta, which literally translates to high water. St. Mark's Square gets completely submerged in water during a high wave. The area is just half a meter above the average sea level, the lowest point in the whole city. That's why it quickly becomes a drain for the rest of the flood water. So if you're on vacation in Venice and there's an alert for Aqua Alta, it's best to avoid this place. On the 12th of November 2019, Venice was hit by a tide of water over 1.8 meters high. These were the highest tides recorded since the 1960s. With more than 80% of the city underwater, houses, buildings, and monuments were flooded alike. Video and images coming from St. Mark's Square show the area partially submerged in salty water, with people having to drag themselves across in knee-high water. As the St. Mark's Church is a 900-year-old monument, the Ministry of Culture is extending a 3.3 million euro grant to restore its original glory. That is just one thing, the cumulative loss due to Aqua Alta was reported to be more than 1 billion euros. As part of this restoration, 1 meter tall glass barriers are installed around the perimeter of the church to prevent water from seeping inside the church while the area outside the square remained underwater. Even though it was a record-breaking tide, flooding isn't new to Venetians. Historical records show that flooding dates back to the 8th century. But the situation for Venice is only going to get worse from here. There have been 324 very intense high water events since 1872. More than half have happened in the past 30 years. Why? The answer is simple. Due to global warming, glaciers are melting at an alarming rate, thereby increasing the sea level. This is causing Venice to sink at an alarming rate of 1 mm a year, making it more exposed to tides and storms from the Adriatic Sea. And while the 1 mm figure might not seem much to many, take a look at these photos of the Rialto Bridge. In the old picture, you can clearly see all the steps, while in the recent one, only the top steps can be seen. This situation was made worse by human activities like pumping groundwater from beneath the lagoon in the 20th century. The locals quickly realized the devastating impact of such a practice as Venice subsided about 120 millimeters. This practice was swiftly banned afterward even though the effects were long-lasting. Nevertheless, it's unfair to blame the whole thing on a human intervention. The Adriatic plate on which Venice sits is subducting beneath the Apenninus Mountains. Subduction refers to the sideways and downward movement of a plate into the area beneath another plate. If Venice continues like this, experts suggest that the city and surrounding land could sink by about 80 millimeters relative to the sea in the next 20 years. In terms of temporary measures, wooden planks have been installed around the city so that people can stay above the flood water. With the current frequency of high tides, locals have to use them at least three to four times a year. A second yet obvious step is elevation. The Venice local authorities raising quaysides and paving in the city in order to protect built-up areas in the lagoon from medium to high tides. And while both these measures might mitigate the destruction, they do nothing to stop high tides. To solve this problem, Venice has come up with a great solution. It's wrong to say that this was a recent suggestion, as this life-saving project has been more than two decades in the making. We're talking about Mose, a $7 billion megaproject that aims to save Venice from high tides and the accompanying destruction of its sites. The system is designed to save the city and the lagoon from tides of up to 3 meters. Mose is a system of mobile gates installed on the seafloor that will rise up to stop a high tide. These gates are installed at three inlets, Malamaco, Chioggia, and finally Lido, where the Venice Film Festival is held. The project was begun in 1787 by the Ministry of Infrastructure and Construction began in 2003. The expected deadline was 2011, but that was far from what happened. After a series of lengthy troubles, including delays, corruption, scandals, and criticism, the deadline was extended to 2018, then 2021, and now 2025. However, some gates remain operational like the two gates in Chioggia Inlet, which were completed in 2012. In the case of dangerous tides, they are raised in 8 minutes using hydraulic motors. Overall, the project encompasses 78 gates with a majority installed at the Lido Inlet. Two rows of 20 and 21 barrier gates are installed on the seabed that are linked by an artificial island. This artificial island hosts the technical buildings and the system operating plants. 
The construction of the island didn't go well with environmentalists who argued that the island altered the lagoon and allowed seawater to enter more quickly. Let's talk about the actual working of the gates. These big yellow gates are housed in a metal box type structure from which they're attached through the hinges. These hinges are crucial for lowering and raising the gates. The metallic encasing is 20 meters wide with a variable length of between 18 and a half to 29 meters. When the tides are low, the gates are filled with water and the rest below sea level. However, when a high tide is expected, compressed air is pumped inside the gate to force the water to leave. Once the gates are filled with air, they gradually rise above the surface to stop the waves. When the tide recedes, the gates are filled with water again and lowered into their housing. The average time for a gate to be raised is 30 minutes, while it takes 15 minutes to lower. Authorities have set a benchmark to only raise the gates for tides more than one meter high. That doesn't mean that the gates can't be raised for a lower tide. The most system is flexible. Each gate can be controlled independently from the other one, and one or more inlets can be closed according to the forecast. But there's a drawback to these gates. When the gates are raised, ships can't enter or leave the lagoon. Taking into account that Italy is the third largest blue economy in Europe, it has to find a solution. A ship lock was constructed at the Mamako Inlet to allow the transit of large ships, while at the Lido and Chioggia Inlets, there are smaller locks to allow emergency vessels, fishing boats, and pleasure craft to shelter in transit. However, it's important to note that ship locks take at least 8 to 10 hours, reducing the efficiency of the Venice port. Mose was initially estimated to be at a cost of 1.6 billion euros. It's already cost Italy 6 billion euros. Mose operators estimate that it costs 200,000 euros each time the barrier is deployed. The cost of energy, the air being pumped, and bridge staff adds to the 63 million euro a year spent on these gates. Even though the gates provided the needed protection to civilians after it passed its test in 2020, critics pointed out the environmental harm caused by it. While the gates may not cause much harm when in the lower position, they'll cut off the majority of the oxygen supply if raised frequently. Indeed, after two years of its inauguration, the gates have been activated 49 times. According to experts, the gates effectively shut off the Venetian lagoon and will turn it into a stagnant pool of algae and waste. But that's not even the main issue at hand. Mose has a lifespan of 100 years, which means it's not a permanent solution yet. With most of its hinges rusting already, it's doubtful whether it could complete its 100-year anniversary. Is Mose a good solution for holding back the sea? Or does it create more problems than it solves? Share your thoughts in the comments. But before you go, we have to ask you a tiny favor. These videos take a lot of time to research and edit. So if you like our content, hit the subscribe button to help us reach our 100,000 goal. Stay tuned for our next video.